The Goat House is back. And for the Monday Night Football doubleheader, breaking down and grading how I think each NFL team played in Week 7. Going to be a much quicker video than normal. Back to normal, the next video, the Power Rankings video. I'm just getting back uh, from a trip. I was going to a wedding in the Keys. Interesting plays, first time there. But, uh, yeah, back on track after this. Let's take a look at where I tier these teams for Week 7. Just some key takeaways from these bottom teams here. The Panthers, I keep giving an opportunity to remove the Panthers tier altogether, and they keep doing that, what they did against the Commanders. Saints, I, I guess, I mean, I expected a little bit more of a fight, but I guess what do you expect from a team that's missing half their players and really no receivers out there? So those two teams in the worst tier possible. The D tier, the Patriots, started off pretty well, but then kind of went south from there. I thought they would be able to do a little bit more offensively. They show Again, they showed it early on. The Jets, I mean, just so disappointing. Uh, the first half was fine. Second half, it was a complete meltdown. Defense letting up big plays. The offense still just not ready, still not there. Uh, surprised they didn't get the run game going. I do think they abandoned it a little too easily. Just extremely disappointing. The Titans, I mean, they put up a fight for a little bit. I know they end up getting their ass kicked, but put up a fight with a, for a little bit, but that team's just nowhere near ready. The Giants, very disappointed in them. Uh, thought they would be able to do much more offensively. Like how, how the offense is non-existent in this game is pretty ridiculous. Defense was doing their thing for a little bit, and they were giving up big plays, mainly to Saquon Barkley, but... You can't blame the defense. I mean, they got to do better against the run, but they, they had them in this game. The offense has got to help them out. I mean, it's just ridiculous there. Uh, the Falcons, yeah, a surprising one there. They were they were pretty efficient on offense, but then not scoring points. I just kept going, how do they not have more points right now? And then the Seahawks obviously outplayed them the whole game, but it was really that Kirk Cousins, you know, strip and, you know, scoop and score for a touchdown. That really changed everything, and they were getting outplayed even at that point, even if that didn't happen. I was just very surprised that there wasn't, you know, the offense was pretty productive. I thought it would be, there would be more points up on the board for them, and the defense still has issues. Bucks just happened. It was a weird game. The way that started, it was awesome, you know, the, the, for, for Tampa. It was, uh, you know, they, they were going to be, ro they were rolling in the beginning. I thought they were going to roll away with this victory, but... Yeah, as soon as Mike Evans had that drop and injury at the same time and then Baker threw that bad interception, things just completely change. Like, if those two things don't happen or if one of those things don't happen, I think we see a completely different game. I'm not saying the Bucks would have won, but I think we see a completely different game. But this game was over. It's weird. It was a weird one because right off, right off the bat, it felt like they were going to win, and then it was over fairly quickly for them. And that defense has problems. Antoine Winfield, a rough game for him. Zion McCollum, who's been great, uh, got torched by Bateman for a touchdown. So, so a strange one for the Bucs. I know they scored a lot of points, but this game was uh, out of reach for them uh, much earlier in, that, in the end. The next couple tiers, C tier, the Colts found a way to win. Really slow game. I mean, with the two defenses being weaker defenses, you'd think there would be a little bit more offense. I mean, the takeaway from this is the Colts, I mean, obviously look much better with Joe Flacco on offense and, you know, at quarterback, and uh, that's kind of an issue there. But they did enough. I guess the defense has been stepping up a little bit lately, but they played the Titans, Will Levis last week, and the Dolphins uh, and Huntley this week, and Huntley goes down. So uh, not a lot to get excited about about the Colts. Uh, the Browns, yeah, I mean, they didn't get destroyed. They kind of stuck in this game. They had, you know, the Watson gruesome injury there, so that was pretty tough. But the defense has been... Trying to keep them in games. Dolphins were in this game. Felt like they were going to win for a little bit. I uh, just can't believe Tyreek Hill can't get going. I know he doesn't have quarterback help there, but, um, you know, shouldn't be useless. Shouldn't be disappearing. I mean, there's other receivers that don't do that no matter who the quarterback is. So, um, you know, I know it's definitely not his fault, but he's got to be a little more helpful, I guess, in this game. That's my takeaway from that one. 49ers, yeah, a rough one from Purdy, especially that, you know, interception in the end zone there, you know, kind of towards the end where it felt like they were still going to be in the game. So a tough one for them was surprised they were favored in that game. And the Raiders, yeah, they kind of stuck in it. Fourth down at the end of the game where there was a one-score game. They needed a touchdown, two-point conversion. I don't know why they're kicking the field goal. I understand they got a false start, backed them up. You still got to go for that. It's pretty manageable. Um, playing for the cover and not to tie or win the game. That was a little odd. BC tier, yeah, the Bengals won. They pulled away against the Browns. Offense didn't have much going. They didn't really pull away until, yeah, the Browns really getting affected by Watson going down, even though, you know, he wasn't doing much anyways. But 
so I guess the Bengals defense is picking up. You expect them to p- play well in a game like this, though. But the last two games, you know, it's kind of a flip for them. But offense did execute down the stretch to kind of pull away. Rams offense didn't play all that great in this game. Defense created turnovers with the, you know the defense to step up, but with all those turnovers, they, they, the Raiders you know were still in this game. They're fortunate they kicked the field goal. Not that they for sure would have scored or anything, but at the end there, uh, Vikings yeah started hot then. Not so much, and then they had the game, and they lost the game then, so it was a kind of a weird one for them. They got too many big plays. Like, it was it was an odd one for their defense. It was just big chunk plays or big long touchdowns that the Lions were getting. Uh, offense, you know, did, did enough, it felt like. Just needed to not go three and out in that last time, that last, um, I guess, attempt. Well, not the very last go at it. They had a couple plays at the very end, but... Uh, Darnold did have Jefferson on that play. It's a bad throw. Chargers just got done uh, just moments ago, and they could have won that game. A controversial call uh, going against the Chargers and the Marvin Harrison Jr. hit. That was just an awful attempt at a, at a catch. Just so many things wrong with that as a, just a receiver. I don't care what level of play you're at. So the Cardinals kind of get bailed out. Marvin Harrison Jr. gets bailed out. That You could definitely argue the Chargers should have or could have won that game. But at the end of the day, that's why I do put them in the BC tier. The defense played pretty well, you know, for the most part, but they couldn't stop the run. Uh, and then Herbert played well as well. They moved the ball, but at the end of the day, the Cardinals did outplay them. You know, even though the char- in my opinion, you know, even though the Chargers could have won that game if a call, one call went their way there at the end. But can't win the game with only field goals. Couldn't stop the run, which I think is more like the Chargers' run defense. It's been surprisingly good. But that's just based off the stats. Haven't really been tested all that much yet. Um, so I did think they got outplayed, even though they you could argue they should have won the game at the same time. Um, so tough, tough loss for them. Uh, but got to got score touchdowns. Got to score touchdowns. Next couple tiers, the B, the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, it's a b- big victory to stay undefeated. It's tough to do. Last undefeated team beat a good team in the Niners. A little sloppy, though. Mahomes a little sloppy. And just kept thinking, all right, they're going to pull away. And like, no, the Niners are back in it, even with all these uh, mistakes that they were making. But overall, you know, big win, good win for them. Texans lost, but they played very well at the Packers. You know, came down in the end. I, I thought probably the Packers would miss that kick just because the kicker issues. But good thing they brought in McManus. That was huge for them. Texans, you know, without Nico Collins, Mixon played well. Uh, they could have won this game. They were that close. So um, defense played okay. Uh, it kind of went, that game kind of went as I predicted. I thought it was kind of in spurts. Like here's offense, I know defense, and then, you know, kind of back and forth. Cardinals pulled off against Chargers, maybe a little fortunate because that controversial call, you know, uh, you know, against uh, or more on the Marvin Harrison Jr. drop, which was brutal. Again, I talked about it already. Just brutal attempt at a catch, I, I'd like to call it. But I do think they outplayed the Chargers. Uh, James Conner ran really well. Uh, Kyler started slow, kind of picked it up after that. Uh, I, I did think they did deserve to win. I didn't think they deserved to call at the end, though. But uh, we'll put them in the B tier, A tier. Uh, Bills started slow, so could, you could say A's a little generous, but they end up dominating the Titans, but they start slow, and the Titans do have a pretty good defense, as bad of a team as they are, uh, but, you know, they, they closed it out and got going. The Lions, yeah, maybe maybe the biggest, you could argue, biggest winner uh, uh, on the week, or the biggest win, because they beat, uh, you know, a division rival in Minnesota, maybe the best team in football so far, I think the Lions maybe are that team now, so maybe most impressive, or like the biggest statement, Lions, little you know started a little slow you know thanks to you know questionable decision on the first drive there from Campbell to you know to with that attempt give the Vikings a good field position but and then almost you know let it slip away as good as as good as most that game was going for them like they should have dominated they should have won big and they were very close to losing that game you know if the Vikings don't go three and out if it wasn't just an error throw by Darnold um, you know, and, and then they uh, Gibbs gets them down the field who played good while Montgomery was injured and did end up coming back. But, um, yeah, so that's probably why not best. You know, they weren't, like, perfect lights out in this game. They did have tough competition, though. Packers, you know, get it done with the Texans. Could have went either way. Defense has been uh, step, stepping it up a little bit as well ever since Alexander came back. But Love's got to take care of the ball. That's kind of what he is, though. I mean, that kind of today's era, you know, if you turn the ball over, 
it's actually not a killer if you can go and make big plays. So we see a little bit of both from Jordan Love. And the Jags, you know, a little bit of a slow start, just a little bit, but then really got going. And, I mean, it's not – you can't really praise them too much for beating the Patriots, but as they were able to stay in London, the Jags, that is. But, hey, I mean, they end up dominated down the stretch, you know, most this game and closing it out. So they absolutely needed that. Doug Peterson probably keeps his job because of that. Some Jags fans probably didn't want it, but did you really want to lose – that game to the Patriots. And definitely the most teams we had in the best here. I mean, teams that looked almost perfect here. I mean, the Commanders, and you could say they played the Panthers, but they absolutely dominated them. Jane Daniels goes down, doesn't matter. You know, Marcus Mariota comes in and plays well. It just shows the team, the culture, the coaching, all, all of the above. And the Panthers, even though they're very bad, they have a decent offense. They can move the ball. They can be explosive. And the Commanders' defense is getting better. It keeps being proved, you know, that that's happening here. Uh, Steelers. I know it was more of a second half thing, and there was some clutch plays, you know, pickings, but Russ kind of getting thrown in there. They're very confident that he's the guy, and it, it kind of shows, like, once it kind of, you know, knock the rust, rust, knocks the rust off, uh, it gets going, and both sides of the ball actually does the job. I mean, you're scoring that many points on the Jets' defense? I mean, are you kidding me? So you got to put them in this tier. tier. Eagles, defense continues to play well. Offense, and Saquon Barkley clutching up. Just They were not supposed to dominate the, the Giants in that fashion, so... Um, you know, another team that dominated the Broncos. I know the Saints missing half their team at the Broncos, putting up big points and making plays on both sides of the ball. Seahawks, surprising because they were going downhill, but it kind of showed, and they played well on both sides of the ball there. I know the Falcons kind of moved it, but being explosive on offense and getting healthy on defense and showing that, hey, when they're healthy, maybe they can play. So that's a big statement win in Atlanta in dominating fashion. And the Ravens, really slow start. Thought they were going to get their ass kicked the way they start, it started, but they end up doing the ass kicking uh, there, so just looking like a dominant, explosive force, and uh, that, and I said it, I said it recently. Uh, the way the league is this year really favors the Ravens' play style. If they had their team from last year, this year, not how things work, but they would win the Super Bowl easy this year. And the way their team is built in the past, I couldn't really get over the hump. It kind of in that style of play that was the league, you know. But this year, it. it kind of fits their game and uh they they are a little more suited now i guess the league is a little more suited for the, the way it is for the ravens here so um looking like a dominant offensive force defense picked up a little bit and they were kind of starting to blow it at the end but i think it's because they knew they had that victory uh the onside kick two factor in but things kind of getting going for them that looks great um, so they're, they're kind of back on top to where they were, but that wraps it up for all the grades for this one next video, power rankings, and we're back on track, normal schedule, timing, length of videos. So, uh, that will do it for this one. Please like subscribe to no Kate's on cannot wait for our weekly pick show Tuesday night joins for that as well. Lo loads of content. We're going to start adding the trade deadline stuff as well as that approaches, but that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.